So now that I've spent some time experimenting with Unity and I get a sense of how the basic uh, terrain tools work, I want to start to build Project 2. And the way I'll get started with this is from the file pull down menu, I'll choose to create new project. Um, alternatively, you might launch Unity and be uh, um, presented with the project wizard where you could either open a project or create a new project. And I'll set the destination to in this case, I'm working to an external hard drive into my class folder, and I'll call this project Island, and I'll hit save. Uh, I'll choose some of the packages that I know that I'm going to use. I know that I want to use the character controller. I probably don't want light cookies at this point or lens flares. I definitely want some particles, and I'll go through and make some decisions about some of the uh, packages that I know that I want to use. I'll skip this mobile asset. I definitely want to use the terrain assets. I don't think that I'll be uh, using these tessellation shaders or tune shaders. I definitely want the trees and the water. Uh, and I'll create that project. Now, if I inadvertently forget to import uh, some packages that I need, there's an easy way to import those into an existing project. And I'll remind you of that menu. So Unity completed importing the packages that I need and building that, that, that project folder. And in the event that as I'm moving through this project too, I realize that I missed some packages when I created this project, I can always go to the assets pull down menu, choose to import packages, and we get a full list of all the packages that are presented to us uh, in that project wizard. So if you miss something, no big deal. We can always come back and add that later. So uh, I'm inside my default project. I want to get started by creating a simple terrain from the terrain menu. And at this point, before I even start, start messing with my project, I'm immediately going to choose File, Save Scene. And I'll save this first scene that I'm working on. And I'll simply call it Scene 1. I can go back and rename it or save it as something else later. Uh, but just so that I have a, 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 a document uh, or a scene that I'm working on, I've established that. The next thing I want to do is I want to start to experiment with an appropriate uh, uh, terrain size. Now, you may go through a couple of different iterations of this to make sure that you have the right size and scale of your terrain. Uh, I, I've done a little bit of experimentation and uh, I'm going to take a look at my sketch and I'm going for this big C shape. And I want my island to be roughly a mile from one edge all the way to the other, maybe a little bit smaller. And what I've come up with is uh, I'm going to set, with my terrain selected, I'm going to set the resolution and I'm gonna set my width to 1500 meters. Now that's just underneath a mile. And for my length or, or, or the Z dimension of this, I'll set this to about 1000. Now you should come up with your own solution, your own dimensions. Uh, it might be that I decide that this is a little too big depending on how much interesting stuff I have on my island or it might be a little bit too small. Um, but I'll make that decision as I start pushing forward in this project. So. I'll set the resolution of my terrain. And before I spend too much time on this, I just want to rough out the basic elements. And so the first thing I'm going to do is with the terrain selected, I'm just going to establish that basic C shape of, of my island. So I'll choose a relatively large soft edged brush. Uh, I'll, I'll choose some of the middle of the road opacity here, and I'll just start to create the rough outline of the island that I want to create. And that's pretty much the shape that I wanted. And, and I'll also establish the island out in the bay in the middle. That'll, that'll rough out as my, my volcano. And this is the basic footprint for my island. And I'll come back and uh, I'll continue to manipulate this. Now, I could introduce right now a first person camera and walk around on this surface. In fact, uh, I'll just jump into standard assets. I'll go into my character controller and I'll drag a first person camera out into the equation. I want to delete my main camera because the first person controller includes a camera. Uh, I'm going to select my main camera and hold down command delete and then I'll get rid of it. I could also right click or control click on it. Uh, I want to orient my first person camera. I, I don't even see it. I, I kind of see the preview, uh, but I don't see where the camera is. So I'm going to look at it from the side view, make sure that I have the move tool selected. I'll just lift it up a little bit to make sure it's above the train. I'll look from a top-down view, and I'm pretty satisfied with, uh, with that it is, in fact, sitting over the train, and I'll hit the play button. And now you can see that I'm really disoriented. I don't get a sense of what the size and the scale of this environment is because there's no lights, there's no textures. 
So I'll quickly rough in some lights, and I'll do that by going under the Game Object menu, Create Other, and I'll quickly establish a directional light. I'm going to let the light default. I'm not concerned about what it looks like at this point. I just need some light inside the environment. I'll notice really quickly when I hit play, uh, I, I'm still missing some critical information here. <clears throat> As I run around the surface of my island, I can see the horizon line changing and some of the landscape elements changing as I walk forward, but I don't get a sense of, of how fast I'm moving. So one of the things that'll help that is a texture uh, on this terrain. So with the terrain selected, I'll jump back into my terrain tools here and I'll select my paint texture brush and I'll quickly add a texture and the texture that I'm going to use this time is, uh, I'll start off with this dirt texture, and I'll add. Um, that'll give me kind of a sandy texture that, that I can use for all the, the beach edges of my island. Uh, this time around, when I hit play, because I have a light and because I have a basic texture, I get a better sense of, of moving through space. And, uh, you know, right now this feels like a pretty big space because it's just long, it, it's flat, it's boring. Um, as I approach the shoreline here, and, and as you can see, once I'm producing this project, uh, this is not a very good starting point for my first person camera. Because I'm trying to get to the, to the shore where I can look at what's eventually going to be my volcano island, and I'm, I'm, it seems like I'm walking forever. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll grab that first person con controller, I'll grab the move tool, and I'll move this closer to the beach. Now, while I'm here, I'll just grab some basic water. I'll drop that into the scene. I'm gonna bump up the scale along the X to 2000, and I'll do the same thing along uh, the Z scale. And I'll move this up just a little bit along the Y axis. Now I could grab it uh, by this green arrow and just drag it up, or I could use the, the, the transform position value of Y, and I'll just bump that up by, let's say, one meter. And that basically sinks the entire island underwater um, anything that, that was that was not raised up. And so by now, when I get started, I can run around and, and really get a better sense of, of how big my island is. I got a little bit of contrast into the scene, and that'll give me a sense of, uh, of, of how large my island is. And, and I'm pretty satisfied with that. Again, it feels a little big right now, but um, once I start adding uh, all the different elements and start breaking this down in, into uh, points of interest, I, I think I'll be able to fill it up pretty quickly. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm fairly satisfied with the size of my train. I might make it a little bit smaller, but in the next presentation, I'll continue to add and rough out some of the basic elements, and then we'll take a deeper dive into really um, uh, uh, exploring some more, some more of the environmental effects like skyboxes and, and, and fog and other environmental effects. Uh, we'll take a look at some uh, enhancements uh, in lighting and particle effects. And then we'll take a deep dive into uh, creating some interactivity with some basic scripts. But we'll catch up in the next presentation and continue to refine the environment before we, 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 we take a dive in, into the interactivity. We'll catch up in the next presentation.